If you're struggling to put stuff up on the wall of a new build house and it's a dot and dab construction or dry line construction, you might want to hang around. We're going to have a quick look at these Corfix by Metex, uh, specifically designed for dot and dab. I'm going to put them through the paces, see what they're like. Hiya, welcome back to Gosforth Handyman. So as I say, today we're having a look at these Corfix fittings. To understand what these are, I think it makes a bit more sense to explain first what dot and dab is. Nearly all UK new builds involve some form of dot and dab in the construction. Dot and dab is basically where you've got block work construction on your inner leaf, so blocks kind of like like that kind of thing. And then what they do for your inner wall is the glue plasterboard onto it. So he has put some plasterboard and they literally, they physically glue it on with blobs of a kind of plaster type stuff, but it's, I think it's a special adhesive. And the way you know if you've got dot and dab is just by knocking the wall. And if you, if it sounds hollow, and then you've got a really solid bit like that. So that's a dab of the adhesive underneath the plasterboard. And then we've got hollow, we've got a dab there. And you normally find that they're in straight lines. That's not always the case. It depends on the dry liner, whether or not. Sometimes they might do a kind of crisscross shape with the dabs. Sometimes they do them in square lines. Sometimes it's just random. But here we've got one there. One there, one, one there. So if we've got one here, I would say we'd probably have another one about here. Let's have a go. It's a little bit further up there for some reason. So if you're lucky enough to hit a dab, you can get away with just normal fixings, really. I would suggest slightly longer ones that go all the way through into the block, but the dab is protecting the void from collapsing. But where you've got a hollow section, like here, you've basically got probably about an inch gap before you get to the block work. And the problem is, is that when you hang stuff on a wall like that, the plasterboard can start to give way. So when you start tightening whatever it is into the wall, the plasterboard can kind of crush and fall back into the void. And that's a problem that you've got on dot and dab. Other than that, dot and dab fine. Everyone gives dot and dab a hard time. I think it's pretty cool because you can run cables up behind your plasterboard between the um, block work and the plasterboard. For It makes it really easy for hiding like speaker cables and stuff like that through the wall. So I don't, don't give it too much of a hard time. You just need to know what fixings to use. It also sometimes gets called dry lining, which I don't quite understand because my understanding of dry lining is that you don't then plaster the wall afterwards. That's the whole point of why it's dry as opposed to wet plaster going on a wall. My understanding of dry lining is that it's where the joints are taped and then uh, jointing solution or whatever is put over the tape. But Dry lining seems to refer to dot and dab for some reason as well. If anyone can pop in the comments why dot and dab gets called dry lining, even when dot and dab gets plastered over with wet plaster, then I would be intrigued to know that. But either way, dot and dab and dry lining are kind of the same thing, I think. So the thing that I'm really intrigued about with these fittings is the load ratings of them. And specifically on the spec sheet, it says that they can handle an ultimate tensile axial pullout force. In other words, how much force you can physically put on pulling it straight out the wall in lightweight concrete blocks. And it can handle a, a force of 0.68 Newtons. Remembering back to my uh, A-level physics, if I, if I remember correctly, you multiply it by 100-ish to get it in a kilogram force, which makes a bit more sense. So it's roughly 70 kilos, 70 kilograms of pull-out force. Now, if you remember when I was testing the lightweight blocks with the red wall plugs a few weeks ago, they only got up to about 30 or 40 kilos. 
in, in the lightweight blocks. So I'm very intrigued that these plugs can get up to 70 kilos. That's the ultimate axial pull-out force you're gonna get from them. That's not the recommended loads for putting on them. You need to include a safety factor. They recommend a safety factor of seven. It's the 70 odd kilos that I'm intrigued about. So let's do a pull force test on them. So you'll have to imagine this is a wall on its side. It's like a wall that's fallen down if you like. I'm not gonna bother testing the plasterboard on this bit, but wait until later on and I will be doing a proper test where I'm gonna hang my very, very heavy TV using a single core fix plug. And we'll see whether or not it comes crashing down to the floor, but we'll come back to that. For the minute, I just want to do the pull force test. The plasterboard offers very little kind of resistance in the pull force, so really, it's a block that we're going to be testing. This is a lightweight block here. Let's see, so the instructions say 10 mil drill. Should you really use a masonry bit, but these lightweight blocks are so soft, a normal drill would be absolutely fine. So, so you can see what you get. You get four plugs in a pack, in one of these packs anyway. You get four big screws, and you get four of these shield things. So. That's how soft these blocks are. They're awful. Gently tap tap. Right, let's fire it up. Cool. Right, we'll just take up the slack. So we're going to get the usual thing where the uh, the chain starts to bend a little bit. So, I mean, we're already at 40 kilos. But I'm just going to let this settle out a little bit. Let's just leave it for a little bit. So we're at 55 kilos at the minute, 54. If it can get to this elusive 70 kilo mark, oh, we're past it. We're not stable though. Let's see if we can get to a stable 70 kilos. That'll be, that'll be really impressive. We're at 80, we're, we're gone past 80 there. 75, 74, 73. I would say that's about it. It looks like it's getting pulled out the hole. And we're starting to lose any stable kind of force on it. We're down to 36. So you can see the plug is now starting to come out of the hole. I'm not really getting... Oh, I've reached the top of the thing. I'd have to move it down a chain. Let's do that and we'll see what happens. Continue tightening this up. But as I say, I think we'll probably just see the screw getting forced out the hole now, the plug physically coming out. We're at about 40 kilos of force at the minute, but you can see the whole plug's now just coming out. That's it, the blocks. It's not the plug's fault, it's the blocks just giving way. I'm not quite sure what they mean on the specs where they say ultimate axial tensile force for pullout. I don't know if that means just a peak figure or a stable figure where it, it gets to a number and it stops going down basically. Either way, for lightweight blocks, that's impressive. That's really impressive. So, time for the next test. So this is my pride and joy. It's a very old, very heavy Pioneer Plasma Telly. And it's currently held on the wall with four massive wall bolts. If you look back in some of my other videos, you'll have seen us put this up. Theoretically, one single core fix plug and screw should be capable of holding this TV to the wall. Now, I was rather hoping that there would be a nice central place where I could screw through to hold this bracket on. But the closer thing I've got is this little U-shaped cup here. So this is gonna be even riskier than, uh, than originally planned.
all four wall bolts. Wall bolts, by the way, they have a metal fixing in the wall that expands and a giant bolt that goes into it. And this TV was held up with four of them because it weighs 30 kilos. We now have one single Metex Corfix dot and dab fixing in the middle and that can confirm we're definitely into a hollow section of plasterboard there as well, we're not into a dab. You can hear it's hollow. So we've literally just got that one screw and nothing else. If this doesn't hold, Metex, you owe me a TV. Oh my God, this TV is so heavy. Missed it. Alright, this time. Come on. That ain't going anywhere. That's me putting a a lot of force onto that. But it's only got one screw, it's not even properly held into the bracket, and that ain't budging. Don't try this at home, ladies and gentlemen. Don't attach a 30 kilo TV to the wall with just one screw. But this is holding absolutely fine. 30 kilogram, 42 inch plasma, on the wall with one Corfix screw no problems at all. This isn't a sponsored video by the way, but if you've enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button and you'll see lots more videos like this. Check out Corefix at, I think it's corefixed.com. As I say, they're made by Metex, they're specifically designed for dot and dab walls. And I can tell you right now, that ain't going anywhere. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Where's my heart? Thank you for watching. See you next time. Do I just leave it like that? I need to put it all back together now. Might just leave it. <laughs>